previously on the Exploring India edition. They go there with a very open mind. I think they've been contemplating this trip for a long time. We learn for this Time warp to the era of the Mogwe empires and the rule of the Maharaja. The Exploring India edition of the Faisal Sayed show takes you on an adventurous journey, immersed in rich culture and history. India is the epitome of wisdom surrounded by history. Explore the bustling streets, the cuisine, and the life and path traded by sages on this epic journey through India. So we've taken off into the sunset, finally, after weeks of planning, chatting to crew, understanding what we're going to do and how all of that's going to happen. Just a quick recap on the last episode. The last episode we spoke to our technical director, Ahmed Mohamed, who joins me today in studio. And we also chatted to Asim Jogi about the planning. And we visited the home of the Ismails to find out how the trip planning was going. In this episode, we have a very interesting lineup and people are going to get to see a bit more of what you're watching this documentary for. Ahmed joined me in studio and uh, we want to just reflect on some of the things uh, that has happened as we finally take off. I know that we start off in the aircraft and uh, aircrafts can be fairly tricky spaces for some people. Some people don't like them. What do you think? I think initially, you know, when, when we were a bit younger, we start, when we started flying for the first few times, I think a person enjoys it. I think after flying quite a lot, you get tired of it and for me it's I'm actually tired of flying. So. But, but, but there's always that excitement whenever you're still no, going to go somewhere. Yes, no, the but it's about there. getting there now. No, no, the excitement is there to get on a plane to fly somewhere. But for me, is, if it's going to be an eight hour flight, nine hour flight, my wish is get on the flight, fly one hour and I'm there. <laughs> Not this whole seven hour and 14 hour journey. Because it, it takes too long and you become very tired also. And, and then if you look at some of the visuals that, that's going to come up now, you'll notice how tired the guys are. Me for one, I was exceptionally tired. I, uh, I must be honest with you, like people always ask me about these dark rings under my eyes, which uh, thank God studio manages to take away yes. <laughs> during these recordings. But, but on a trip there, the, the makeup department's not worth. So you can see that tiredness and, and for a presenter, it becomes very really difficult because you have to articulate words and you become drowsy and that sort of thing all the time. How do you cope with that? I don't think you can really cope with it. I think you just have to do what you need to do. I mean, there were some times where I was sitting and thinking, you know what, there are some nice shots to get. But the thing is, you're so tired to even sometimes get the camera out and stuff. And, and I think maybe that's sometimes the only regrettable part that you sometimes have. But the thing is, you just sometimes, you're just too tired. You just don't have the energy. But sometimes, you know, okay, we're at a certain place. Let's do a shoot. Let's do something here because you're not going to get it again, especially when you're traveling. It's not like you could say, I'm coming back tomorrow here. I'm coming back tomorrow to the airport, especially when you just land. You, you just land, you get into the airport. So we, we, do, we did a link certain places, for example, like just coming into the airport. But if I, if I didn't do it there, we can't go out to the airport and come back to the exact same place tomorrow and redo that because they're not going to allow you in to get there. So sometimes it's just a no matter. Sometimes I feel like I'm falling asleep behind the camera and my hands are tired. I can't just keep the camera straight, for example. And, but you just have to do it because you're not going to get it again. I think it's all about getting the right shot and that's what Ahmed's talking about. Well, time to land in Dubai. That's up next. It's uh, 2 a.m. South African time. I think it's about 4 o'clock. 4 a.m. in Dubai. Now we pilot said that uh, he's going to start descending in about 10 minutes and will land in about 30 minutes after that. Um, I think most of the passengers are, most of the crew members are tired. 
I, for one, don't sleep on these flights at all. Um, in actual fact, um, one is sort of awake and asleep all the time, that sort of thing, but that's part of traveling. We've got about a four hour stop in Dubai, and after the four hour stop in Dubai, we take off for New Delhi, and I think that's another three and a half to four hours again. Uh, so it's, it's been a long trip. Uh, generally, we leave all the way from Cape Town, but that's not what we did on this trip. We were for two days in Durban and we left from there. So we kind of scored on the two hours. But um, I want to catch up with the rest of the crew, but they kind of scattered them half asleep. Uh, so we'll catch up with them on the airport when we land in Dubai International Airport. This is Dubai International Airport for people following us on social media. Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we've got these meal vouchers, as you can see, and so we're going to try out some of the gourmet cuisines and some Arabic, I don't know whatever they call it. But anyway, we're tired, uh, we need the meal, and uh, we're going to be here for five hours uh, in to New Delhi. wondering why we have these dark rings under our eyes. Well, we died. Um, flights are generally, um, they're comfortable, but uh, they're tiring because you sit there uh, doing absolutely nothing and uh, eating most of the time. And I think not walking around makes your body feel a bit lethargic. Uh, for me, for one, I've got a bit of swollen ankles, uh, but, I, but I think that's because I was sitting on one spot. So everyone's tired. The time now in Dubai is five, just past 5 a.m. So African time should be about uh, just past 3 a.m. I think. Yeah. So, um, how did the flight go for you? Tiring. Hmm. I watched a lot of movies. <laughs> Lots of movies. Um, were the passengers comfortable? Um, yes. They were all on track. We got them all. We have got our passengers here. We're just waiting now. We're going to go to the transit lounge. Okay, so we're off to the transit lounge. Um, the stay here uh, uh, at this about point? Five hours. Five hours. Okay, so the stay is about five hours and then it's about another three and a half hours to. Well, yeah, to, to Delhi. Another three and a half hours to Delhi. Um, so um, keep you updated as we go along. Um, we want to explore the airport also. You're probably used to doing this all the time. Uh, so, but at the same time, it still becomes tiring. How did it go? No, I had a small nap, but uh, so tired. Okay. So, uh, I know we're going to sit here for about five hours. What do you guys normally do uh, when we're in transit? Well, uh, Emirates are good enough to give us a meal voucher. Mm. So we just go and refresh up first and then we go and have breakfast. Okay, so um, I know it's uh, 3 o'clock in South Africa, it's 5 o'clock, just past 5 o'clock, but it's breakfast time here for us and we're going to go with that. Guys, can you believe this? Uh, if you're thinking that you might miss any of the foods that you used to know, Ocean Basket, Dubai International Airport. We actually want a 
you know, continue our journey, then we'll get tired after that. We're excited to go wherever we want to go. And then we can get tired and it's okay, we can rest. I can say we are well and salam to all of them, you know. And we, we are good care by Faisal and the whole troop here, you know. And uh, nothing else we can say. Wherever we went, we are, uh, you know, happy. That's all. It's like one family going. To buy International Airport uh, is an interesting experience. Uh, I think it's an experience on its own. Uh, what I found with the airport is that it's a shopping mall. It's more shopping mall than anything else. There are shops running from top down and you walk for miles. Uh, we've been traveling for about 12 hours. Uh, we catch a flight in the next two hours, I think, uh, to New Delhi. But I must admit, coming to Dubai Airport, I would advise you that if you're a shopaholic and you want to see something extra, then don't come to the airport in transit only. Book your flight for later so you can spend some time here. You guys are probably thinking that I slept. I did not sleep. I'm just excited because we're taking off from uh, Dubai International and we will be landing in New Delhi. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what time, but I think it's about three and a half hours or something. Um, again, I'm saying it, but I keep repeating this, but everyone's sort of tired. Uh, but I think there's a bit of excitement now because it's the last leg. Remember, we came from Cape Town to Durban, Durban to Dubai, and Dubai to India. Uh, and in India, we've got so many stops and, and so many commitments and that sort of thing. Uh, so we, um, I think we're looking forward to that. What do I see down there? Uh, that's interesting. Um, I'm trying to work out how a billion people fit into a square meter. <laughs> and that's what I'm thinking. Because where we come from in South Africa, I think there's about 60 or 70 million people. Uh, India's got a population of over a billion people, so I'm trying to understand that. So when I look down, I see uh, this, I can really see the denseness. Um, you know, when you're flying with an aircraft, you see scattered pieces of, of populous houses and buildings. But when I look down there, I can see that there's houses and buildings everywhere for, for a long time. So um, we are five minutes away from touching down in New Delhi. From the time I left South Africa, I have not slept. Uh, so I'm extremely tired. Some of the passengers hasn't also slept. So we totally zoned out. Um, but um, always when it's time to land, you sort of wake up and you feel excited because the journey is about to start. So this dictionary is fairly old, it's the Chambers 20th century one and I think the definitions have changed but I'm looking at the definition of being delirious and delirium and it says here a delirious disorder of the brain produced by over absorption of alcohol often marked by convulsive or te trembling symptoms. But I felt delirious. The song that goes, how does it go? Hey, Mera, India. Hey, Mera, India. I actually got it right. I got that line right. <laughs> but but it, I, I didn't have any alcohol. But the point is that I just felt delirious. Flying that long made me feel very zoned out. A and I think that's what happens to me during these trips. I'm sure it happens to a lot of people. Yeah, I suppose. And, and I think that's a key thing about traveling 
and that is that you're going to feel tired and, and sometimes you ask yourself a question and that is why am I doing this a and why do, I, why do I put myself through this and then after a day or two you just go along and everything is gone fine and, and you've done it you've arrived but that's us again then you get some people that, that, that was on the plane and they actually had a whole middle row of four seats themselves which means they laid right across and took a nap I know that's the thing Nazira Mita is one of those people I think that she I wondered for a moment where she disappeared to and I actually thought that she exited the flight I didn't see at all I mean who wants to open a blanket with somebody looking like a corpse laying over four I didn't know it was her at all but she had a plan there what do you think about uh, the Dubai airport? Firstly we heard a lot about it before we got there it was my first time um, in the Dubai airport and we were at the Qatar airport before um, the comparison that the Dubai airport is way bigger. Uh, when, when I think about Dubai, I'm always thinking about shopping. Uh, but, the, but the big shock for me was actually seeing um, Ocean Basket. Like uh, when I think about Ocean Basket, I'm always thinking about South Africa. Uh, and yes, I never thought I'm going to see an Ocean Basket. Even the McDonald's, for example. I know McDonald's is all over the world. But just to see it somewhere else every time just makes it seem like, you know, okay, there's something there that, that, that is similar to home. But now, when you see, like you said, when we saw the ocean pass, was a bit different because, because you don't see that a lot anywhere else. Well, so we're finally on our way to the hotel, and that's where Manzur and the rest of the team that looked after us while in India briefs us for the plan ahead. The song that goes, how does it go? Emira India, Emira India. I actually got it right. I got that climb right. Everybody come out. Emira India. Marketing is under my eyes. I know that's what everyone's probably thinking. But guess what? After leaving South Africa at, I think, 7 o'clock yesterday evening, time here now is almost 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We've just arrived at the Indira Gandhi International Airport in New Delhi. And uh, after not sleeping, all of us are going to wake. And uh, you're awake because we just landed, excited, uh, want to see the sights and the smells and the sounds of India. Welcome to India. I did on this yesterday, the, 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 the significance of the garland itself is an item that is placed on an esteemed personality. the host honors the person. So I think that's exactly how we felt. That's nice. Uh, I enjoyed it. I just don't know how still we really are, but, <laughs> but, well, well, but, but it, was, it was a nice sight and it was something nice to take part with, with, with the rest of the, the group that was with us.
But it's good to meet new people, new faces, talk to them, enjoy them, get to know them better and make them comfortable in every respect, make them make their things easy so they're stressless in a, in a foreign country and give them the best of everything to make them feel they are in home. It has been a very long, about eight to nine years now and we have been doing quite good. Understanding is very good, the faith and trust is there in between us and, and I think it will carry on. Time to time things will be there and you will understand yourself before I speak. You will obviously get to know what we are doing and how how good we are in doing things and preparing things and taking them to some beautiful parts of India which are fantastic and some old parts of India which is the beauty of India as well. The clients wanted to come on a special Islamic tour to, to go to all the Mazars and that's why we, we, we have spoken to Mr. Manzoor and, and he put up the package and then we, we both worked together to sort out you know, the hotels and whatever it is that we require to go, to, to, to go on this tour. And to, from tomorrow morning, approximately half past nine, we will be leaving. We'll start to see the Mazars in Delhi. And uh, thereafter, on a daily basis, we will notify everyone what, what's, going to, what's going to take place. We're all very excited, though we've had a tiring trip, long trip. But we've checked, everybody's checked in now, Alhamdulillah, everybody's happy with their rooms. We're meeting down again at 7.30 for a special tea party. And um, everybody is excited about that because they love Indian tea. And at 9.30 we're going to meet for dinner. And that's a speciality with uh, lovely Mughal dinner that we're having. It's a surprise that we're having for everybody. I take a lot of vitamins. So I, I thrive on my vitamins. That keeps me going. But I also try and get a nap in between. So I was very fortunate on the Dubai-Delhi flight. I found four seats and I made a bed for myself. We actually, uh, uh, that was the thought going through my mind now, uh, hotel check-ins are very standard process um, and I think that after long trips, especially being out uh, in the sky, on the road, for, more than, for about 24 hours, uh, one is tired and you want to take that break and that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're at the Holiday Inn, I don't know what area this is, we chatted to Nazira and Salim and uh, they gave us some thoughts and also we met Mansoor, the tour operator and um, he appears to have it all in check. What concerns me about the trip is that we appear to be going for a very, into a very heavy schedule. Uh, everything is planned to the T, from the time that we get up till the time we go to sleep, what we do, the leisure times, all of that's going on. For now, I hear that there's a surprise and that's the supper and a oh, tea That's pot. a lesson to be learned from traveling and that is, I believe, that when you step out of your home, bound for the airport, you switch off. So you leave everything that you thought. So you plan up to that day. This is my philosophy. I plan up to that day. Anything that happens after that, you deal with it as it comes. And believe me, it does not always go the way that you want it to go. That's part of traveling. Traveling, who said traveling is an easy thing? Well, I'm not going to tell you much about the next episode because it really starts to heat up as we hit the roads of New Delhi. For more information, visit www.fazelsay.com. Until next time, goodbye.